Hey there, my name's Brett. Here's how to get mirror finishes on your knives using nothing but the stock WorkSharp Precision Adjust Elite. No compounds, no finishes, no creams, no lubes, just this system. How to get a mirror finish on any knife. Here's the core principles. For anyone who already knows sharpening, this is for you. This is an advanced guide, not a beginner guide. <clears throat> first things first, as you work your way through the grits, is creating this cross hatching design. I've studied for the last 15, 20 years, sharpeners such as Terada, Hiroyuki, Katsumi, Sakashita. Sakashita being who I believe is the greatest modern knife sharpener. Also tons of, tons of other sharpener uh, channels, instruction guides, booklets, entire books, websites, uh, you name it. I've tried to consolidate that research into a couple key principles that you can apply to this system to get the mirror finish. And this system only goes up to 800 grit and that's it. How do you get a mirror finish with 800 grit in a ceramic? Here's how. <clears throat> first things first, the WorkSharp instructions recommend you use a sawing technique they also have a YouTube video saying whether or not you should exclusively push or exclusively pull. I say none of the three. After my research with a microscope and comparing it to the WorkSharp videos, I believe the best system is one where you use the entire length of the ceramic or the entire length of the diamond stone to cover the entire length of the blade, allowing you to be as consistent as possible. That looks like this. Starting at the butt of the knife, of the blade, edge, going up until you hit the top, and then pulling down. This allows you to be extremely consistent. You're not using excessive force or downward pressure. You'll change the angle if you push it too hard. You do this five times. Then critically, you cross hatch by changing direction, starting at the tip, going back to the butt, applying pressure up and down trying to finish at the very, very tip with the top and trying to finish with the butt at the back. That is the most critical part. Component number two is to use water. It makes no sense not to use water. You will notice a difference as you use water, not only in the consistency of your stroke, which is important, the reduction of force that it is required for you to smoothly, consistently move up and down the blade, and also the amount of debris which comes off the blade easier, not allowing it to get stuck in these ruts and cause further rutting. Tip number one is the method. Tip number two is to use water. Tip number three is to have a rag to wipe down, get the debris off of the knife and of the stone itself. Significant amount of metal will come off in there. You don't want that as your sharpening. Get that off. Third thing, importantly, as you work your way through the grits, you spend more time on the finer grits. So when you're starting out on the 220 grit, you're gonna go up, up and back five times. Then you're going to go up and back five times. You're gonna do it again five times. Then you're going to flip the knife and you're going to do the same thing five times. Then you're going to increment down. You're going to do it four times, three times, two times, one time. You're always going to finish with an upward stroke, very lightly pinching it on each side when you finish each grit. When you start your next grit, so you go from the 220 to the 320, you're going to do this five, 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 five but you're going to do it twice. Then when you go down to this one, you're going to do the 5555 five, 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 twice and the 444 four, four, twice. Then on the final grit, you're going to do 5555 five, 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 twice, 4444 four, 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 twice, and 3333 three, 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 twice. Because we are going for a mirror polish, we need to reduce the entire length of the blade, steel, down to the deepest level of the rut. By spending more time on the higher grits will help us 
get the blade down to where the lower parts of the blade is and where the light is going to reflect differently. This is a brand new factory edge, Civivi Damascus. You can see the edge. It's there. It's nice. But there's certain a certain level of inconsistency where you can't get this. You can see my phone stand. Let's get the coin again. That's how to get mirror polish on this system. Use this technique. Do not use sawing. Do not use exclusively down or exclusively up. Use the entire stone for consistency, the entire stone on the entire blade for consistency. Use light pressure. Use water. Have a rag. And spend more time the higher you go in grit. Here's the final question. Is it sharp? <clears throat> Pretty much any decent knife can cut paper. Like I said, factory edge CVV cuts paper. This RJ Martin Kershaw, which I recently finished, will also cut paper. However, will it cut parchment paper? Parchment paper is probably one of the more affordable, accessible things that you have around your house that can tell you if your knife is really sharp. Here's the Civivi Factory Edge. It'll, it'll get it. It'll get it to a point. Here's the Kershaw I just finished. Nothing fancy. It's got old 8CR13 MOV steel. That is sharp. And it's pretty. I've already used it a lot, which is why it doesn't quite have the mirror it used to. And that's how you do it. That's how you get a mirror finish using the WorkSart Precision Elite and nothing else. If you want a lot more information, follow along with the rest of the video. I have a lot of tips, reminders, and things that I remember as I go through the process. So check that out. But if you just want to give it a go off that 60 second breakdown, give it a run and good luck. Hello, my name is Brett. Today, we're going to talk about how to get mirror edges from the WorkSharp Precision Adjust Elite. Only the Precision Adjust Elite, which includes the two different triple stones, which goes up to 800 grit with a ceramic stone and a leather strop. We will not be using any compounds, lotions, creams, anything like that. We will be attaining mirror finishes with only this system. Who is this video for? This video is for anyone who wants to know how to obtain a mirror polish on their blades using only this system. It's also for people who are already experienced sharpening knives. You already know how to develop a burr and check for a burr. You already know the value of stropping. You know what a ceramic is used for. You know how to work through grits. You understand the different types of steels and how some are going to take more strokes on a particular side in order to develop a burr based on the hardness of the steel, the composition. This is not a beginner's guide. This is an advanced tutorial. It's also for people who own this or who are deciding whether or not they want to own this. So let me give a quick review. My thoughts of the WorkSharp Precision Adjust Elite. It is the greatest knife sharpener to ever exist under $300. 
That's my basic opinion. I've used a lot of knife sharpeners. I've used many, many different knife sharpeners over the last 20 years. I've sharpened hundreds plus, almost a thousand knives probably in my time of all different kinds. Everything from, you know, a buck hoodlum, the sword hanging up on my wall, kitchen knives, big pocket folders, small pocket folders. And I have never used something that has impressed me as much as this system because it addresses the single most critical part of sharpening, which is angle control. It is the most consistent angle control system and it, it's $120, $130 shipped. That is mind blowing. The other beauty of this system is it is quick. It is efficient. If you're someone like me and you like to touch up your knives from time to time, maybe it's a relaxing thing. Maybe it's a hobby. It's fast. It's very fast. It's efficient, which is wonderful. So there's my quick thoughts. A little bit more about me. Again, I'm not a professional knife sharpener, but I've used lots of systems, have a bunch of different uh, knife experiences. And through those knife experiences, I can tell you that this system is missing a few things. It only goes up to 800 grit which is really, really sad for me. It also does not do well with smaller blades. It cannot sharpen your Victorinox. It cannot sharpen paring knives and small kitchen knives. It also has a really difficult time with any blades that have curves or recurves or not just a straight shape. It also cannot do larger blades, 16th inch stock, on things like a Buck Hulum or a Schrade SCHF9. Can't do those. However, there are many aftermarket components which can make this the perfect system. In fact, go check out a video by Neves Knives. It starts with an N, Neves Knives. He talks about a bunch of aftermarket tools that turn this into the perfect system. It addresses things like the recurve issue, the small blade issue. It has an angle one so that you can do scissors by putting the blade straight up and down. Beautiful. Uh, definitely check out that video. So, all that out of the way, let's talk about how to actually do this. How do you accomplish mirror finishes with this system? Let me start by saying that it required a bunch of research. I'm going to try and distill what I have spent hours, weeks, months, years researching and trying to apply to this system. First things first, if you want perfect mirror finishes and the sharpest blades you will ever use, this is not your system. This system is for people who want to efficiently, quickly sharpen knives with the highest quality possible on their blade with the lowest possible time and effort investment. And that is what I think this is perfect for. A lot of the research that I've done has been from some of the greatest knife sharpeners of all time, from different, you know, YouTube channels, from going and, and visiting different uh, professional sharpeners and different systems and testing things myself out personally. So here's a lot of the research over the last 20 years that have gone into applying principles to this system different from what the instructions tell you to do. Uh, this includes things like the actual WorkSharp video. So WorkSharp put out a video where they, sh where they try to answer the question, is it better when you're using this system? Is it better when you're using this system to go with a pushing motion exclusively on the blade, a pulling motion, or as they suggest in their training material, a sawing motion as you're making contact with the steel. Fascinating video. Definitely check it out. That went into this. Other things that went into it were, again, lots of research and, and different people. Perfection YouTube channel, Big Brown Bear, all of the guides from knife manufacturer. It's Broden Taylor, Bob Kramer. Nauto from Knifeware, he's their lead sharpener. And then two of the greatest influences, perhaps two of the most prolific knife sharpeners, we have Terada Hirayuki and the greatest knife sharpener of modern times, in my opinion, Katsumi Sakashita. If you look at these professional sharpeners, you look what they do, there's a couple principles that we can apply to this system, and that's what I'm going to go over right now. By the way, the knife we're going to be sharpening today is the Gerber Sumo, a big chunky boy with a axis crossbar lock, whatever they're calling it, I'm not sure. The reason we're using this is because it has a really, really nice 
large primary bevel for the, 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 the edge. It's really big and pronounced. It also has a blackened blade, which is going to look really nice with the mirror finish. It's going to be really easy to see. We could use something like the Civivi Elementum in Damascus, which I think would look beautiful, but the edge bevel is really tiny. It's going to be really hard to really see the mirror finish, whereas it's really going to pop along this here. Um, one thing I want to address, why do you want a mirror finish on your blade? Because it looks cool. Yep. That sums it up. There's really three traditional uh, different types of finishes, Japanese finishes you could put on here. There's Migaki, which is a matte finish. There's Katsumi, which is called a mist finish, which is very shiny, but not necessarily mirror. And then there's the mirror polish. The reason we put mirror polishes on our blades is because they look cool. If there's some other reasons people have, I'm sure you can debate that, but the primary reason is it looks cool. And that's pretty much it. So. We're going to be using this today in order to be able to see that big sharpened bevel. So we're going to go ahead and stick it into the work sharp. Make sure it's pushed very firmly into the back. All this is standard stuff. Nice and tight. Perfect. Make sure we're not going to hit the bottom. Okay, here's where things get different. Here's the principles we're going to talk about. First things first, water. I religiously use water to wet and clean my quote unquote stone, right? My diamond stone as I'm doing this. You look at any professional sharpener, they use wet stones. And I understand that uh, the physics behind the wet stone and the, and the diamond stone is slightly different. However, the concept is very, very similar. You start wetting and cleaning off your stone in between, there will be tons of debris, metal debris, shards. I have found that in order to get mirror polishes, cleaning your stones as you go and wetting them as you're sharpening is a huge, huge impact. So I'm going to put that off here to the side. Next thing, having a rag. I use the rag to remove debris from the knife going toward the cutting edge, not into, I don't slide it like this, pet peeve, I just go this way and clean off the debris that is being caused by the sharpening process. Number three, and this is the biggest one, and that is how you sharpen the blade. Again, I'm going to reference Work Sharp's video. They talk about, do you push? Do you pull? Do you saw? My answer is none of the three. I have some footage that I'm going to put up on the screen right now for you that shows my own microscope macro lens view of this blade that I put a mirror finish on. This is an old school SOG F555, or in other words, it's the SOG Flash 1 Tonto. So I put a mirror finish on this before it looked atrocious. I have microscope footage of, of this exact knife and showing you along the way this. Let's talk about the, the quick principles of this really, really quickly. So when you're starting with a 220 grit, essentially your gaps between the, your gaps between the strokes on the metal itself is going to be more inconsistent, there's going to be more variability, and there's going to be some deeper sections. It's just how it's going to be. Maybe you get a little bit of the metal built up, you drag it through. Regardless, the distance between is going to be wider because the grit is lower. So the distance between the grains <coughs> is larger. <coughs> as you're moving up the grits, <coughs> as you're moving up the grits, you are creating more consistent and finer cuts on the steel or grinds on the steel. This goes all the way down, of course, to where eventually with this system, the best you are likely going to get is this small image right here, where there's still going to be some small flex that you can see because this only goes up to 800 grit. You're really not going to be able to attain just a true mirror polish. That's like thousand grit plus. And, and I'm, I've written work sharp and I really, really, really hope that they end up selling a thousand grit stone sometime in the future. There's aftermarket options, but I hope work, work sharp starts selling it as part of their expansion. 
options. But again, we're trying to create consistency along the entire length of the blade. We're trying to create a consistent stroke path across the entire length of the blade. Now, in WorkSharp's video, they talk about how, and they show microscope footage of how they think pushing creates the best finish. I have not seen anyone create a mirror polish using this system yet. And I believe here's one of the key reasons why. It's because of the way that this is used. Gonna take a Sharpie and mark the edge of the blade so that I can tell what angle to set the system at. Gonna do it on both sides. By the way, I absolutely love the maroon inlays. It's hard to see them, but the maroon inlays on the Sumo. There's maroon and blue. Looks so good. Now I'm going to lightly, I'm guessing it's going to be closer to 23 degrees. Okay, I can see that's too steep because I'm taking off near the edge and not closer to the belly. So I'm going to adjust. Go closer to 21 degrees. Okay, that's looking a lot better. I'm just gonna do a little bit of a test. Move up the blade a little bit. Okay, we can already see here, by the way, this is a factory edge. We can look at this factory edge here and see it is not consistent. As the blade progresses, the angle changes. Again, edge control is the absolute most critical part of edge sharpening. And you can see here on this Sumo, the edge angle is not consistent. Let's try the other side. This is the reason the Sharpie is so important. Completely different experience on this side. There's still Sharpie near the edge, but not higher up. The sawing motion I'm using is purely to lightly test the degree it is not the method I recommend. I'm taking a little bit of a closer look at it off camera to determine what I'd like to do with this edge. Setting your edge is setting your edge angle is one of the most important parts. On this, it looks like about 21 degrees is, is good for one side of the blade. For the other, it's gonna take some work. Okay, let's talk about refinishing, a, refinishing an edge. If we're gonna completely refinish an edge, we're gonna start on 220, the lowest grit, obviously. Then we're gonna work our way up. If you already have a knife that's in great condition, it's nice, the edge angle on both sides is symmetrical, which I've tested on this Civivi Damascus Elementum, and it is symmetrical. I'm not going to start at 220. There's no reason why I should subject the steel of the knife to this. That's only going to cause me to have to do more work as I move down the line. The only reason why I would start here is if I am trying to take off a lot of steel. I am trying to chunk through so that I can more efficiently and quickly get through this side. Now on this particular sumo, it looks like I'm actually going to want to do start on the 220. I was hoping to start on a higher one, but the edge angle is so inconsistent from both sides that for me and my preference, it personally bothers me. So I'll use this opportunity to talk about the first and second things that I change here. So first things first, how do I sharpen? 
I make sure that the washer is as low as possible so that the top of the diamond is pretty much coming in contact with the bottom of the blade and then I do a check at the top. That's a little bit too high so I'm going to lower these washers down and make it so that the bottom of the diamond is just barely at the edge. This is the most critical thing. I do not saw go up or down. I start from the bottom and I go all the way up in one motion and down in one motion. Up, down, up, down. Making consistent pressure the entire time from the time it touches at the bottom. Making sure I'm all the way back to the little edge. All the way up. I'm diagonally making sure I'm making sure that I'm having consistent pressure all the way up and down. And I go this direction first, five times. Then I start here and I start at the bottom. So this needs to be a little bit higher. I start at the top of the stone and I run up. And that's a little bit too high, so I'm gonna come down. and I go this way. I start slow to make sure that I'm getting a consistent pull for the entire length of the diamond. Now, I have ADHD. I cannot do two things at once. I'm constantly distracted, so if I'm trying to talk, I have no idea how many times I've gone back and forth one direction before I go the other. So I'm just going off gut feel here. But if you're focusing, here's my general rule of thumb. I go up at this angle five times. Then I go the opposite way five times. Then I go this way five times and this way five times for a total of ten. Then I flip the blade and I do the same thing. Five, 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 flip the blade, wet the stone both times. Then I increment down by one. I go four times, four times, four times, four times. Now that's depending on how much you're trying to reprofile this edge. If you're trying to reprofile it significantly, <clears throat> then you need to do more passes. Four, 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 and then flip. Now here's the next most important part. If we look at the sheet, there's going to be divots. There's going to be inconsistencies. You'll see that in the microscope footage that I posted in the video earlier. There's divots. There's deeper areas. If you want to take out these divots, then on the higher grit, so when you move from 220 to 300, you need to do more passes on this higher grit so that you can get the entire steel further down to the level of these divots. As you consistently clean your stone with water, wipe it off with a cloth, clean with water, make sure you always do water after the cloth. You don't want to leave any debris from the cloth on here, such as little fiber fragments or little bits of, of you know, dust, metal, whatever. Point is, when you start here, you might do five passes times five passes times five times five, and then you increment down to four, 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 four and you go three, two, one. So you're incrementing down, five, 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 four, 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 four. When you get to this step, I increment, I start higher. I might start at five, 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 and I might do that twice. I might do this twice. I might do four twice, three, two, one. When you get to the next grit, by the way, there's only five grits here and then there's a ceramic. When I get to the next grit, 
I will do even more than this one. Not significantly more. I'm not talking like three times or twice the amount. Only this first one I would do two times. And then I would do normal four, three, two, one. It's worth noting one other thing is on my last pass, my last stroke on any given grit, I lightly go up and I do not go back down. I lightly go up and I do not go back down when contacting the blade. I'm going to do a little bit of a time lapse. I'm going to quickly go through the grits on here. As I have notes, I will let you know and speak out. Quick time lapse to save you time. And then when I get to the ceramic, I'll give you some more thoughts on getting that mirror finish. Okay, one quick note. What I'm doing here is checking for a burr along the length of the blade. I'm specifically checking back here to make sure I'm getting all the way to the edge. And I'm checking the tip. A couple other quick notes. As I progress toward the tip of the blade, it's very easy to roll this and have it start to fold the tip over. So it takes conscious effort to keep it flat as you approach the tip of the blade. Quick check in here. So this is the 220 grit. You can actually physically see here the little cross hatches I was talking about. Again, reference the microscope footage that I had earlier as I was sharpening that old SOG Flash 1. But you can actually kind of see the cross hatching. This cross hatching is critical to getting the mirror finish because what you're doing is you are balancing out the way that light is reflecting off of the little passes and you're essentially smoothing over from one direction with the other direction. It creates a much, much more uniform light reflective surface across the blade. Finishing up the 220 grit here. Up. Up. Not going down. Other side. Up. a little bit of a burr so I'm going to lightly up, up. okay moving on to the next grip quick check in here as you can see all the Sharpie has been removed from each side. Some right there, but that's actually not on the cutting bevel. That's actually above on the grind. And you can see that cross hatching again, critical to getting the polish. Next grit, moving on to the 320. One other note I want to mention here. Sound is a part of it as well. Listen to this. Listen very closely. Anyone who's sharpened knives a lot knows when you take a knife across a stone or across a diamond, it has that sound. You hear when the burr starts to curl over, right? Even start to go to the other side. You can hear that. You can almost feel it too. So you heard it going this direction. Listen going this direction. This is why the cross hatching technique going both directions, in my opinion, is critical. You can tell by the sound that you are doing work 
when you are coming back this direction from when you were going this direction. You can hear it, you can almost feel it. I'll do it on this side, let you listen, and then I'll go back into speed mode. Hear that? It's a good sound. You may have seen my hand jump off the edge of the blade. Typically what I found for me is it's because I'm pushing too hard. I don't want to be pushing that hard. It's a reminder for myself to lighten up the amount of downward pressure I'm committing into the stone. Let the number of strokes, let the number of strokes be what removes the metal, not the pressure and the force pushing down. Holding up my other three fingers helps remind me to keep it light rather than bearing down with my middle finger onto the diamond. Another quick note here. It is tempting sometimes to get the stone more than halfway through the stone like a third of the way through the blade. You want to cover the entire length of the blade from the top of the stone to the bottom. So rather than rushing to here and then only having this much of the stone to finish the last little bit, you want to have a consistent smooth stroke all the way from top to bottom. It's hard to be perfect and that's part of knife sharpening. But your angle control is set, which is what I love so much about this system. The more consistent you are with your stroke, top to bottom, stone, tip to butt, the better off it'll look. Quick note, these washers will eventually adjust position as you bounce against them. So I push mine up a little bit so that I stop falling off the edge of the blade. One other thing, consistent strokes can be very difficult as it starts to get dirty and gum up with metal and debris. So I take a little bit of the heavy KPL knife lube, dab it on, dab it on, run it a couple times, and it runs very smooth. The greediness is gone. This is great stuff. I use it on this to keep it running smooth. Check in. Look at all of that metal shaving that's accumulating. This is one this is one of the main reasons I use water. Look at this. The water helps allow the metal shavings to slough off and instead of getting caught up in these ridges that are created, it lets it exit to be wiped off. Could it exit as cleanly without water? No. Could it exit altogether? Yes, definitely. You don't have to use water, but I definitely highly recommend it. On that note about water, when is water the most important to use? I believe water all the time, but it is most important to use at the first step and at the last step because you have the biggest metal shavings, the biggest metal bits right here 
at the at the coarsest grit and you want to make sure you have the absolute cleanest surface to shine with on the last step Okay, let's check in here. Just finished up the 320 grit, and you can definitely start to see you can definitely start to see the impact that that cross hatching is having. You can also see just without zooming in, you can see those deeper divots. It's it's unavoidable. But hopefully you can also see how the cross hatching helps to work the steel in two directions and start to counteract the what I will call the canyon effect as if you were just constantly going one direction and that's where again the inspiration for this method was taken again from people like Terada, Katsumi, uh, Naoto when you watch someone sharpen on a stone they're going they're going back and forth both directions constantly. Um, I, I believe that was the inspiration for the sawing motion that was in the WorkSharp instruction manual. However, I did notice a couple things. With going up and down, you can unintentionally create hot spots. If you focus on a section for just half a stroke more in the middle before you move on, you start to create inconsistency along the blade. So you start to have little bits that might be just a little bit deeper, right? And that's going to impact how you start to graduate down through here. Also, the sawing motion, I noticed that it created a steeper burr and the effect on each side was that it felt almost inconsistent. What I mean by inconsistent is that as you're sawing your way across, you won't have the same burr develop all the way across the blade if you don't be very precise with your up and downs and how many you're doing on each side. On one side, you might be just a little bit faster than on the other side, you might be a little bit slower. That's why I believe this method is the most consistent because you're covering the length of the blade with the length of the stone and never more, never less. And even if you go fast or if you go slow, you're still covering the same length of diamond stone to steel. Okay, let's move up. 400. And let's check in <clears throat> we just finished the 400 grit here look at that consistency look at how the light shines across the blade the sharpened edge there's a level of consistency that would be difficult to obtain if all of the strokes were going in one direction in one diagonal direction or one horizontal direction or a vertical direction. See, there's a little inconsistency here, though. As we catch a part that apparently just caught some strange angle, maybe some debris, who knows. However, that being said, now the party starts. The 600 and the 800 grit is now where you really get into the finishing territory. This is where you're putting the polish on the edge by really getting into the grain and removing a lot of the visible strokes that you can see, a lot of the imperfections. It's going to take some time, again, to get in there. This is where you want to not use pressure, again. You want to be very light 
and let the number of strokes take off the metal. You don't want to just like let it flop. You want to give it a little push, but you don't want to be bearing down on the knife. One of the main reasons, if you push too hard, you're changing the angle. You want to be consistent, smooth. The next two, <clears throat> the next three are all about smoothness. Clean off the blade. Adjust, that's too high. Too high. Off we go. Okay, checking in here, finished up with the 600 grit. Look at that. We are really starting to see the consistency moving along the blade here. We're starting to get rid of those bigger divots, those canyons. Now the party starts. We're onto the final grit offered within this system, which is sad. To me. Moving on to the 800. Gonna make sure it's very clean. Make sure the blade is clean. Wipe it down. Rock and roll. Look at all that from the 800 grit. Just a couple passes. Use water. Use a cloth. Quick time out to lube the rod right here. As I mentioned, when you do use water, it can get a little more gummed up, a little dirtier, dirt, little more dirty. So I get some of the heavy lube. Put it on either side here after I wipe it down with the cloth. Give it a few test runs. Much smoother. It's going to be much easier to consistently, lightly run that 800 grit up and down. Since I forgot where I was, checking for a burr. There's a pretty good one developed on the other side, so I'll probably just do a couple more passes. Flip it over. Take a second to listen in. Check out how the 800 grit sounds. Did you hear that change about stroke four? This is where it changed. You could hear that shift in smoothness. You'll notice I'm taking a lot more time to wipe down this 800 grit to clean off the blade to add water. I want as few particles as possible interacting with the metal at the point that I am trying to polish it now. Not necessarily polish. 
ceramic is really what we would what I would call the polishing step. However, this 800 grit is taking all of these <clears throat> all of these little divots and getting them to be as consistent as we possibly can with this system. Side note here, as I'm approaching the end of my 800 grit cycle, I'm trying to use less pressure as I finish these last few passes. hand gets tired from pinching that back thing all the time. Let's check in after that 800 grit. Look at that beautiful edge. Now that looks good, but I'll tell you right now, the ceramic is where the magic really happens. We're going to be able to catch a bit of a reflection here. Just off that, we can see some of the coin. Not all the colors really come through. Can't really read text off of it. As we move on to the ceramic, a couple notes here. <clears throat> yes, you still wet your ceramic. Absolutely. Do you need to do more passes than you did on the 800 grit? No, we're breaking the rule here. You don't need to do more passes, but you can do a lot because you're putting almost no pressure. You are very, very, very lightly moving the ceramic in the same method, same method. You're not changing anything. I'm putting almost no pressure whatsoever, very lightly. Forgot to do this on the other side because I have ADHD and I can't do two things at once. I forget. So I'm going to make sure when I go back, I'll do this pass twice. You can probably already start to see just how much of a difference this is making. You can see it now. You can see it now, can't you? Oh yeah, you can see it. Let's check in post ceramic. You could read text off of that.
but we're not done. <clears throat> we have a couple more steps. We're moving on to the strop. A couple notes on the strop. Number one, <clears throat> you want to have a light, light dusting of compound on it. Now you'll notice the compound starts to get hard and brittle. One thing I like to do, take the spine of one of my knives, lightly rub it across. Softens it up a little bit. Makes it so that uh, I'm not getting that hard, plasticky feeling. And then I'm going to lightly, lightly rub on a little more compound. I don't think uh, the brand of compound really matters that much. I'm using NAF's Strop Compound. Okay, I have some compound on there. <clears throat> Couple notes. Same technique. Down, 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 down. Going down both directions. And I'm going to put a moderate amount of force into this. Nothing crazy. Again, I don't want to change the angle as I'm pushing too much. This is a little short. There we go. Now we go to the other side. Same thing. Now that I finished stropping, I'm going to flip it. I'm going to do a couple more strop passes. I'm going to use lighter pressure. And I'm going to do it again. Lighter pressure. Here comes the kicker. My last tip for you. I didn't cover this in the overview. This is just for people who watch to the end. I'm going to take... I'm going to take my angle guide here. And I'm actually going to increase the angle... Slightly. By about a degree maybe maybe a degree and I'm going to very lightly very lightly do a couple more stropping passes there's still what's called a micro burr on the edge no matter how good you are there's gonna be a micro burr you watch the best knife sharpeners in the world I specifically recommend going watching Terada Hiroyuki's video where he does stropping He has like five different strops he runs every single knife through. Stropping is what helps get rid of that micro burr. And now, look at this. Look at the mirror finish we now have on the Gerber Sumo absolutely stunning a lot of people talk about factory edge oh I want to get back to a factory finish you all saw this factory finish the angles were completely different on both sides now by the way I don't think it's a bad thing coming from a manufacturer it's sharp enough to do most jobs that's not a problem look at that absolutely beautiful text look you can read words off of the finish that we put on this knife there you go now for the question is it sharp will it cut paper sure it's paper 
Any decent knife can cut paper. A half dull knife can cut paper. As I talked about in my overview, this, this is parchment paper. Incredibly thin, very flimsy. You can see through it. Oh yeah. It's sharp. Very, very sharp. The I guess we'll, I, I don't really have that much arm hair, so I'm not gonna do much good for you to try and have me shave arm hair. But for what it's worth, there's hair. All right, I hope you enjoyed. Let me give a couple uh, closing thoughts for you on what if you're not getting the mirror polish that you see here? What if you're not getting that that text reading finish? Uh, number one, I would say that uh, you really need to focus on your cross hatching technique. Cross hatching is key. Number two. I would say that you're not spending enough time on I would say that you're not spending enough time increasing your time on the next steps. If you're doing, let's just say 80 passes here, you need to be doing 100 passes here, 120 passes here, 140 passes here. When you get to the ceramic, you don't need to do 160. Um, as you can tell, you just need to do enough till when you can start seeing your face in it. Uh, another thing I would say is that your stropping might be a little lackluster. Focus stropping. Uh, if you want to have an even smoother finish than this, which this is already spectacular, I made this strop for about five bucks. Keep it in my kitchen. Use it on my kitchen knives. It has helped keep them sharp a tremendously long time. If you want to go to the next level on your mirror finish here, go to your local craft store, leather store. Put the rough side of the leather here, smooth side here. After you do your compound, come in with the rough side. Give it some passes. Then go to the smooth side. Give it a couple passes at an angle greater than what you sharpened at. Light pressure. And there you have it. A mirror finish using no compounds, lotions, lubricants, polishes. Beautiful enough, you can read text off of it. Props to you for sticking around to the end of the video. Thanks so much for checking this out. I really hope it was helpful. Here's the coin I was using as a reference. I hope you enjoyed, hope you learned something. And I really hope it helps you get a mirror finish on your blades.